Hi guys, welcome to the channel. I am Will and this is what Will builds and today we are going to be building the 1144 scale real grade RX MDA2. Let's get into it. Okay guys, let's get into this box. There we go, that's better. Okay, we are welcomed with one, two, three, four, five bags of runners as well as our instruction manual. And now let's get these bags all open. Much better. Okay, getting into our runners, starting off we have runner E1 as well as runner D1. Both of these are in white. You'll probably not see it on camera, but this one's slightly more gray than white. And that's the thing with real grades, kind of like master grades, they do like to differentiate uh, different panels and colors. So these kits are very advanced, especially for their time. And they have only gotten better since the beginning where we're starting right now. Moving on, we have our B runner, and this is what used to make and still kind of does these real grade kits, real grade kits. These are all pre-molded uh, double injected frames, which means that they are already ready for articulation right out of the box. Now these can cause some problems, they used to in all these real ones, but I'm going to try and show you guys how to fix some of those problems and how to make your real grades the best that they can be. Moving on from that, we have runner H right here in kind of a black. We have runner F in almost like a lighter gray compared to that darker gray. We have runner G here, which is also in a darker gray, as well as runners yeah, D1 and D E2 to, uh, for duplicate parts to match runners D1 and E1. And finally, we get into our multicolored runners. We have our A runner right here in yellow, that kind of off-white gray, our beam sabers up at the top, and our C runner, which is in three colors. We have this light blue up at the top, our darker red, as well as our basic blue. Now, let's get into this build. Now, aside from the runners, one thing I do want to talk about, and I didn't cover this in my unbagging portion, is the sticker sheet on these real grades. Now, to be honest, I've never really used these kind of stickers on master grades, but I have noticed a difference in quality between these and your standard master grade peelable decal stickers. Now, it's kind of funny, and even though this one's only in um, Japanese, but you can kind of tell down here at the bottom that these kits, when they were originally created, were kind of meant to be perfect out-of-box builds. And that's something that I've kind of noticed in these stickers, is that they seem to fit a lot more precisely than your standard Master Grade stickers do. They seem to be a little bit thinner than your standard Master Grade is. And I have actually found a neat little trick that you can do using an X-Acto knife that helps these stick really, really well and blend in even better than probably most other Gundam YouTubers that you might have seen. So if you're excited to see how that goes and you want to see how I do my process, please stick around because that is part of what this Real Grade series is all about.
Okay, guys, so we are done with the figure and it honestly looks beautiful. I love these real grade kits. The details are insane for how tiny they are. I mean, this is a standard 144th kit and looking at it next to a high grade um, RX-78 that I have right here. I mean, there's no comparison as far as detail. This thing is just so good. So I'm gonna put that guy away now and let's focus on some of these details. So one of the things that I do with my real grades is I try to make these stickers as invisible as possible. I know a lot of people complain about these stickers saying they look horrible on most plastics, they only look good on white or lighter colors, and for the real grades specifically, again I haven't really tried any from master grades or high grades, these clear sticker decals are actually pretty good. And I want to show you guys how I make them look this good. So I figured I'm done with the main figure, I'm done with most of the weapons, and now we are going to take a look at this shield. I haven't done much to it or anything besides build it yet. I've cleaned up all the little nub marks so it is a clean piece. But you can see that there are a lot of details in this figure that could definitely be brought out with some panel lining. And then I'm going to show you guys how I apply the sticker decals on these so that they can be practically invisible on almost any plastic. Now, of course, are these going to look as good as water slides or drive transfers? No, definitely not. Uh, those would definitely be preferable, especially if you're a more professional modeler and that's what you're into. You want to paint this or even just apply water slides and then top coat it. Um, do your thing. I mean, Gundam is not something that everyone has to do strictly. Uh, by a certain set of rules. I have found my own technique for using these, even though most other Gunpla builders don't. And so I just want to share with you guys how I apply these decals to make your real grades, or probably any Gundam uh, that you have, with these kinds of stickers, these real grade custom fit kind of more high-end decals, uh, just so that you can do all of this with pretty much just what comes in the box, excluding some Gundam markers, of course. So like you can see, there is a lot of detail in here that could be brought out a lot more with some basic panel lining. So I'm going to show you how I panel line my kits. It's simple. You can find a bunch of other tutorials on this. Uh, basically what you're going to do is you're going to take your Gundam markers. I'm going to be using black for the darker colors and gray for the lighter colors just so that it's not as drastic of a detail on the white parts because there can be a big difference. And I'll try to show you guys here between what the black looks like and what the gray looks like on a lighter color like white. So I'm going to detail in here a little bit of gray. You can see here. I'm just going to go through. You don't have to be too clean with it. You are going to wipe this off with a cotton swab like I have here. And you're just going to go in and ripple that detail off. Uh, this is great if you want to give it a more weathered effect too. You can kind of just leave that on there but if you use a cleaner end and you go in you can make it look less smoky too so that's with the gray and then this is with the black let's see here let's go down here or no we want to show it next to each other so let's go in here with the black as you can see that's already pretty dark so if i go in with my cotton swab and i pull all that off it makes it a little bit more difficult, um, definitely to clean up in some areas. I've used this on most of my other white kits. This is one of the only kits I've really used gray on. And I definitely prefer it. I see why a lot of people want to use that. Uh, I know people also recommend using brown for some of the darker red or some of the um, yellow areas. And I'm definitely going to try that in the future. I just need to get my hands on a brown Gundam marker. So with that basically, oh here, let me show you the front side. So on the front here too, you'll just go in on all these little lines. It doesn't have to be an inset detail. It doesn't have to be an actual panel line. The beauty of these Gundam markers is that even though they do clean up pretty easily, they also stay pretty easily. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go through all these different little details, even slightly raised or not necessarily all the way inset details and you're just gonna go in and draw inside of it and then clean it up to your own satisfaction again you can make this as clean or as dirty as you want you can make it darker lighter you can not panel line it at all if that's your thing again gundam is not a one-size-fits-all hobby 
it can be done in many, many different ways. And I really want to show you guys the different ways that you can do Gundam and Gunpla and all kinds of model kits on this channel. So I'm going to finish panel lining this and I will be back with the stickers in just a moment. Okay, so for me, I usually use my hobby knife. Uh, this is kind of crucial for the second part, but you can totally use tweezers for the first part. So what I do is, first of all, I usually do them by the instruction manual. So if you look down here, there is that sticker right there in the middle, which is actually, you guys probably can't see too well, this sticker right here. So I'm gonna come under here, find the little seam. Just, if you can't see it easily, just hold it up to a light and you should be able to see that edge pretty easily. Take it and I'll peel it off. So now I've got the sticker here and I will come in and it goes just about dead center between these two. So I'll come in and you are more than welcome to just boom, smooth it over with your finger. But that tends to, again, not focusing. That tends to not leave a pretty good result. That's where people complain about, oh, we can see the stickers, it's not uh, e uh, that good, it looks crappy compared to water slides or all of that. But what I do is I use this little squeegee technique. So obviously be very careful you are using a knife. But what I do is I just kind of take the blade of the knife and I will lightly drag it over the surface of the sticker decal. Uh, unless you're jabbing your knife in, you're not really gonna cut it. You're just kind of, I guess the way that I would describe it is when you see chefs on cooking shows take the knife and use it to scrape the cutting board or stuff like that. So basically think that motion, think like squeegeeing almost. And you're just gonna go in with like the tip slash the edge of the knife and you're gonna kind of scrape it out. And what this seems to do is it I think kind of squeegees a little bit of the air out as well as um, making the adhesive just a little tighter to the actual uh, piece that you're working with. And for some reason, this helps make the sticker blend in just a little bit better with the rest of the piece. So you can kind of smooth over the edges a little bit, being careful not to scratch your kit. and. If you do it enough, don't do it too much, obviously, but do it until you're about happy with it. That should be good for me. And now, it is much less noticeable. Uh, from farther away, you can barely tell that it's there. Even up close on the camera, you really can't see it unless the light shines on it differently because it's got a slightly different texture. So that's what it looks like on a more darker piece. I mean, this is a pretty dark red. You usually see people saying not to use these kinds of stickers on these colored pieces, but this can totally be done. I mean, obviously build the kit the way you want it. Uh, these will peel off. You can just kind of stick your knife under the edge or use tweezers or your nails. I mean, it's a sticker. You can, if you don't like the placement, you can kind of peel it off a little. This still works on stickers that are peeled off a little bit more too. Uh, but yeah, so just kind of go over it with the knife blade edge, just kind of smooth it out. And next, I wanna show you what it looks like on the white part. Okay, so for this white part up here, we're gonna look at this sticker, which I believe goes up in this top corner right here. Are you going to focus on me? There we go. Uh, it'll go up here in this top corner. So that is this sticker right down here, which is sticker number 48 on the sticker sheet. So we go over here, find sticker number 48. We get our knife under it, kind of peel that off. I kind of use usually use a finger so to stick it to the blade of the knife. That way, it's easier uh, for overall placement. And then I'll look back at the guide, kind of figure out where it's supposed to be, and we'll stick it. And this time, oops, sorry, out of the camera. Just go over it, and that border will almost instantly disappear. So that pretty much will make any of the border disappear, especially on white pieces. You can kind of see a little bit just because they shape the sticker. But again, you can kind of go over with your knife, smooth it out. But honestly, like if I had this on my shelf from a couple feet away and someone came in, 
they would not be complaining over this kind of detail. I mean, these are kind of the same stickers you would see on toys for kids and stuff like that. So that is how I apply my stickers. I'm gonna go point the rest of these on my shield and then I'll show you guys the finished product in the review. Okay guys, so now that I have gone over how I apply the stickers on my real grades and done a little panel lining, this is the real grade RX78 II. So overall, it is a very good kit. I guess I'll start by going over everything it comes with and then we'll talk about the Gundam itself. Uh, starting off, of course, we have the shields, uh, which I showed you guys earlier. It has a little bit of articulation that can move up and down to change uh, how it holds. Uh, that moves around to be held in the hand. We've got two extra beam sabers because these ones do detach. Only difference is that these ones just have a slot and these ones have an extra peg. So it fits a little bit better in these, um, or it's the only way that they can fit inside of these early real grade hands. Uh, then you have the uh, beam rifle, which has excellent detail, a lot of great color separation, a little bit of articulation in a few places. And you have the hyper bazooka, which kind of just moves there, but also has a lot of excellent detail uh, all over it. Then you have the core fighter or flyer, um, which actually folds up and fits inside of the uh, chest of the kit. So you can actually kind of recreate the docking sequence. You can actually replace this with the core block that's in there currently, which just came on the uh, real grade pre-molded frame. But yeah, this thing folds up and uh, fits inside of the kit itself, which I think is really cool. You also get a base adapter, which inserts in kind of a weird way for these real grades. Uh, it goes inside this back area because this unfolds here. Uh, you can also use this little area here. Uh, it unfolds all the way to hold the hyper bazooka along the back here, um, just like that, kind of clips in. But it also is the slot for the base adapter. So that kind of just gets plugged in right there. And then you put that on top of your action base, just like that, or like you'll see in these pictures. And it also comes with uh, the regular hands, these are the ones that came on the molded frame. Um, so those are just closed fists, and then you get the poseable ones uh, that these earlier real grades would always come with that have a lot of articulation and are kind of impressive for the size that they are, though they do have a lot of issues. So I understand why everyone tends to uh, not like those ones. Uh, as well as your Amaro Ray RX-78 II pilot, uh, little 1144th scale pilot figure which is kind of insane because they usually don't do this and they've only really done this with the master grades the real grades and the perfect grades so that is everything that comes with the kit and now we're going to look at the figure itself and overall this is a really good figure guys like honestly i would recommend this kit not necessarily to someone who's newer to gundam or who um is just getting into it or someone who doesn't have a ton of experience because it does have some issues and I understand why people um, criticize it the way that they do. But overall, this kit is really good. If you're going to be taking it, putting it in a pose, throwing it on a shelf, you will have absolutely no problems with this kit. But if you are going to be moving it around a lot, posing it, playing around with it, some things will pop off. Uh, the main things that I have noticed on this one have been the front and back skirts. Uh, I don't know if it's just because the, well, I guess it is because the little ball here wasn't quite long enough and this little socket uh, isn't deep enough to hold it in securely all the time again if you're not going to be touching it you're not going to have any problems but the more you're moving it around those will definitely pop off on you really easily uh, some of the legs and arm uh, joints at the hips and the shoulders like to kind of work their way out as time goes on or as you move it around uh, these back verniers can be a problem sometimes if you play around too much with it and then there is this area down here on the arm which doesn't really have any attachment points that like hold it all the way in like a peg or something so that can easily fall off too i tried gluing it in but really couldn't find a way so if anyone finds a way or knows how to glue those in uh, reliably please let me know in the comments um but overall this kit is a very good kit for what it is for a 144th scale uh 10 year old kit 
that had a lot of problems coming out the gate this kit and a lot of, pretty much this series is just amazing it's probably my favorite series of all the gundam um types from high grade master grade all of that um so i i just love these kits and that's why i'm going to be continuing doing this uh series for you guys just to give you my thoughts um on this one i really couldn't find any easy quick fixes for the little issues i mentioned to you guys uh, in the future i may show you guys how to fix some issues that i find with these earlier real grade kits because these ones are prone to those kinds of issues but overall this kit is really really good i would recommend it to uh, a more seasoned gundam builder um, and using my methods you can make this kit look really really good uh, from a shelf um, a little bit farther away even up close it has so much detail um, really good articulation overall you've got those early real great hands which have the bending fingers little waist movement head excellent movement there uh, yeah these ones can loosen up over time uh, with that uh, earlier real grade frame which luckily they have gotten away from but again overall i would definitely recommend this kit um, to a more seasoned gundam builder um, or uh, just any of you guys who are interested or have been thinking about this kit, uh, just know what you're getting yourself into, I guess. Uh, I don't think these deserve the criticism that they get, but I definitely do agree with uh, some of the points that a lot of people talk about on these. Well, that is all for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed my little sticker tutorial and my review of this amazing Gundam model kit, the RX-78 II Real Grade Kit. Uh, if you liked what you saw and you enjoyed my little tutorial, please drop a like down below. And if you are super excited to see what I will build next, please subscribe to the channel, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.